Welcome to the show. Uh, a few weeks ago, we did a video where I used a lawnmower blade, flattened it out, and made kind of a great big chopping knife out of it. Today, I'm going to do the same type of thing, but I'm going to make a much smaller blade. I'm going to call this uh, bushcraft blade, aiming for about a four and a half or five inch blade. So the key is to get the lawnmower blade reasonably flat. This is about a 3 16th steel, so I think it'll be about perfect for the knife that I want to do. So once I have it hammered more or less flat, I put it in the forge to let it cool overnight and then came back the next day, took it out and had a look at it. I was pretty satisfied with how it turned out. I knew I was going to do a lot of grind. Oh, look, I have company. Um, I don't know if you've ever owned goats. I hadn't until about a year ago. Goats are crazy. I mean, they're almost like cats. They're curious about everything. They love to climb. They have really interesting personalities. And in this case, they just wanted to come in and snoop around in my workshop. But the problem is they leave presents for you wherever they go. So I had to shoo them back out the door. So when I made that last project with a lawnmower blade, I was really working pretty rough and I wasn't, I didn't have to be very concerned about how it turned out in terms of precise shape or precise finish. I'll put a link to that video here if I haven't already. That was much more of a kind of a roughed out big knife chopper, parang, whatever kind of thing. But this time I wanted a much cleaner and much more precisely crafted knife. I had a scrap of wood around. I'm not even sure what type of material it was, but it was very, very soft. So after I traced the outline and cut it out, I took it to my new little baby grinder that has a, an 80 grit belt on there and it just blasted through the wood. So I had to be a little careful, but I was able to really sculpt that handle pretty quickly. And once I had that done, I just, I felt like I needed to get the blade sort of in the same perspective. So I quickly brought that over to the bandsaw, trimmed that up. Brought it back and kind of finished it out of the belt sander. So I got something that felt pretty good in my hand. Then I went back to the lawnmower blade and traced that out. And unlike the first go, I did my best to trace it out in a way where I could avoid that central spline and the two holes if possible. And then locked it into the bench vise and cut away. Now, a word to the wise here, if you have loose clothing, well, let me just say, don't have loose clothing while you're working with an angle grinder or anything that runs at high RPMs. And if you do, make sure to really keep a safe distance. I really did not expect this to happen. I felt like I was a safe distance, but somehow that cutting disc bound just right and it jumped back and grabbed my shirt. I had a moment in there where I was very worried about a couple of things. But it all worked out in the end. Now, fair warning, uh, you ladies, there's kind of a graphic shot of my rock hard abs coming up. So you may want to avert your eyes, but no serious harm done. My shirt took the worst of it. So I got back to work and as you can see, I'm standing a little further back and I really made sure to have a good firm grip on that grinder. I got the shape roughed out, pulled it out of there, and uh, yeah, it, it already feels kind of stabby, but very ugly. So I had to make a couple of cuts to clean that up. Once I had the shape roughed out, I brought it back to the forge just to heat it up and do my best to get it a little bit more flat than it was before. 
And after that, it was a matter of about an hour of grinding. Uh, don't worry, I won't make you sit through an hour of grinding. But yeah, there was a lot of work that went into this. And this is where I guess I would recommend just starting with some decent bar stock. Rather than trying to hammer something flat. Because you're always going to have hammer marks in there. And that's fine if that's the look you're going for. But if you're doing what I was doing here, which is going for a nice, smooth, finished blade, I can't even tell you the amount of work that went into preparing this blade for the bevel. And then, as you'll see here, even very carefully working to put that bevel in, I uh, still wound up with, a, I guess, what to me was kind of an uneven and wavy bevel on there, which you'll see a little bit later. Now it's time for the heat treat. Uh, this time, because I was using Mystery Metal, I just decided to go with the oil quench. And that seemed to work pretty well. It, it definitely got harder. It skates a file pretty good. There's definitely some scratches there, but I think that's mostly scratches in the carbon buildup. And you can hear the difference. It really bites into the softer part where the handle is and skates over the part where the blade is. So after tempering in the oven uh, at 450 for about an hour and 10 minutes, I let it cool down overnight in the oven and brought it back out to the grinder. And here I made a decision. I wanted to put the best finish I could on the knife. Like I wanted to test my own ability because I'm pretty new to this whole craft. I wanted to do a flat grind on this blade and I couldn't decide if I wanted to bring it all the way up to the spine of the blade or maybe just bring the bevel up about halfway. And what I found was that despite all my efforts to hammer the blade flat, to grind the blade flat, and, and even to flatten it with the file, it just wasn't a clean machined flat. So getting that bevel to have a nice crisp line was pretty much impossible, uh, at least at my skill level. And so as you'll see in the next video, when I really put the finishing touches on the knife, I reworked that bevel and wound up with something that I felt was really aesthetically pleasing. And I think functional too, which I'll probably comment on in the next video. So that's about it for part one. I'll roll in a little bit of footage here because I've actually shot most of part two. So I'll show you kind of a sneak peek of what's coming. And that should be up either tomorrow or possibly the next day, depending on how quickly I can get it edited. So I really want to thank you for watching. I've had a ton of fun with this build. If many of you have experience with this, I would welcome any comments you have. Uh, if you got anything out of this video, if you enjoyed it, absolutely give me a like. If you haven't followed the channel yet, by all means subscribe. I'd love to have you and I'd love to hear from you. And I will see you in part two.